This is my Lulzbot TAS6 3D printer. I've had it for a couple years now. I used to use it pretty often, um, but then I kind of stopped just because most of our jobs have transitioned to uh, solely uh, circuit design and programming. But a lot of the video and blog ideas I have coming up require having uh, some sort of enclosure made, and I'm not gonna have it outsourced to an SLS printer like we typically do. So I figured this would be a pretty cool project to work on, uh, setting up a heated and vented enclosure for it. So I really only like printing with ABS or nylon. Once you get it dialed in, I find them to be a lot easier and more consistent than a lot of the other filaments. So the basic enclosure of this is just a, uh, I think it's a half inch-ish, uh, Tyvek based uh, insulation foam with aluminum cladding on both sides. They sell it at Home Depot. And what I used to do is use a single wire wound resistor to heat up the enclosure just with like a 12 volt supply. But it was really uncontrollable and I figured we could do a lot better than that. So my idea for this time is to use four smaller wire round wire wound resistors with a touch screen on the side and then have a stack back here with a custom HEPA and activated carbon filtration system to keep the fumes from getting out and have on the top here a LED panel and a temperature sensor and a bunch of other stuff on there to control all of the heaters. So the filament goes up here through this tube and drops down and eventually we'll probably put the filament in either in the enclosure or in a separate desiccant box. So let's hop on the computer and go from there. This project's gonna be a little bit different. Typically I will do a video when I have the schematic done, the board done, and a lot of cases already tested, but for this one, I think it would be kind of interesting to go through when I'm kind of figuring out where to go, what to do, and take feedback and then talk about it in the comments and then kind of work on this um, as a community kind of to see how we end up making the finished enclosure. And one thing I didn't point out on the uh, enclosure behind me is I separated out all the electronics that controls the uh, printer. So none of that will be exposed to the temperatures. The one issue is the stepper motors will be, and they're only rated for like, I think 50 or 60 C tops. So we're gonna be pushing them kind of over their maximum limits, but if they break down, that's not the end of the world. I can just get a NEMA 17 uh, high temperature motor and some of them are rated like 80 or 110 C. So we'll cross that bridge if we get there. So the brains of the enclosure are, is going to be one of these 4D systems uh, touchscreen display. I've used these in a lot of clients jobs in the past. They're really good. Um, you can interface them with a separate microcontroller over one of their communication lines. And they also have a ton of general purpose IO. For this project, I really don't want to have the complexity of having a second microcontroller on the board that has all of the high power stuff for the heaters and the fan. So I think what is going to be the best option is just to use the GPIO outputs from the ribbon cable. So on the screen, basically there's an SD card which holds all of the image data and can act as like an EEP ROM. And then a 30 pin FPC header. And this is the pinout for them. So what I'm thinking is we take a long FPC cable, maybe like a 12 or six inch cable take that from the screen, go to the main uh, control board, which will be on the roof of the enclosure, enclosure facing downwards. And then I have kind of a list, there's not a ton of stuff that needs to be on it, 
but on that board I figure put on some white LEDs so it'll light up the inside of the enclosure. We'll obviously need a temperature sensor to monitor uh, the internal temperatures. I was thinking maybe a humidity also. The one that I already have used in the past is just temperature. So maybe let me know if you think humidity would be nice to know as well. Um, outputs, we'll have two outputs for uh, the two rows of heaters, a single fan output that'll go to the exhaust fan, and then input, really the only one, is going to be a 24 volt DC supply. Okay, so I have a new KiCad project and a new uh, schematic opened up, and on something like this, I think what makes the most sense is to start with the uh, FPC connector. And this is one that I had previously made for using with this board. And since there's a lot of pinouts and it doesn't make sense to keep switching back and forth with the data sheet, what I will do typically is throw on labels for every one of these pins just so then in the future I can just tack on to those um, pins that so I'm going to throw those on right now. Okay so there is the connector all laid out. Okay so a couple things um, I was thinking that we need to have on this. The first one uh, I'll take suggestions. So we need to have a buzzer to let us know when it's done heating, when it's uh, finished printing, stuff like that. We could put it on the board that is going to be inside the enclosure, but then it'll be a lot harder to hear. But there's really no good way to put it outside the enclosure without running a wire from the control board to somewhere outside. So let me know your thoughts on that. For now, I'll just put it on board. And then something else that I want to do is and I, I understand accelerometer. I understand there's way better ways to figure out if the uh, printer is running, but I figured it'd be a little more fun if we throw a little accelerometer onto the uh, uh, print bed, we can tell when the printer is actively moving and that's how we can figure out if the print is finished or not. And this should be a... Uh, input or technically input output. Okay, now typically on a uh, schematic layout, the first thing that I work on is the power supply or power supplies. But on something like this, it's gonna be so dependent on how much current everything's drawing. I think that that should probably be done later. So what probably makes sense to do next is to do the uh, heaters since they're going to be drawing the most power out of all of them. And for them, just because what I already have from past projects is a bunch of those 2.2 ohm uh, power resistors, I think that makes the most sense to do. And since they're going to be off board, what I like is... Um, First, just add a generic uh, connector for them, and we can put this heater one and two. Is Since this doesn't really show us much uh, intuitively about what is actually being connected here, what I often times do is draw the circuit that's going to be connected to it. So in this case, we changed the schematic editor to let us do 45 degree angles, and I also changed uh, the length of this. So what we'll do is draw two resistors. Uh, not the best drawing, but I think it gets the point across. So now we'll label this 2.2 ohms and 2.2 ohms, and this should be rotated like that. Since it's going to be powered on 24 volts, to find the current is obviously just 24 divided by the 2.2 uh, added together, so 24 times 4.4, and that gives us around 5.5-ish amps. So what we can do is put heater 1 and 2, 
five point I think it's four five amps which comes out to a hundred and thirty watts total or 65 watts each and then of course since these are going to be the exact same setup we can change these now to three and four and three and four so the next thing is to work on the fan and this is something i'm definitely going to want to hear what you guys think um, the idea for the exhaust is basically like this, um, and I don't intend to have the exhaust working in the first round of the enclosure, so this is kind of the idea that I'm thinking of. This is the top of the 3D printer, the top of the enclosure, of course. This is a square tube. Right here will be a off-the-shelf uh, like vacuum cleaner HEPA filter then on top of that and there'll obviously be a little access door or something this is just a really rough mock-up to get the point across above that there'll be some sort of divider mesh thing and then there'll be activated carbon uh granules that piles up on top of this and then on top of that with another mesh or layer or whatever will be the fan so the fan will draw air up from in the enclosure and out the top. And my thinking is um, with the old enclosure that I had, I had to remove some insulation because it would actually keep getting hotter and hotter and I had to have a way for that heat to get out. So with this, I figure we have a slow uh, negative pressure pulling air out at all times. It'll make the temperature easier to control and it makes sure that no fumes can escape from any cracks since it'll all be coming out of here. My big concern is the uh, size of the fan. And I have this one picked out. Um, the static pressure is about three inches of water. Um, the value I figured with that is I saw on this forum of someone making a similar-ish uh, exhaust fan with a filter they were using like around a one inch of water uh, fan around there maybe a little less little more and they said that it was just barely strong enough to push any air through so this is like three times the strength I think it'll work um, but if anyone knows a better way to figure this out, let me know. I don't really want to do any simulations on it. These don't draw much. Um, amp and a half-ish, amp and a quarter. I guess I'll just lay it out as if we're using that fan and then can change it uh, depending on what you guys think. We're going to use just another generic two-pin connector. So now what we need to do with this is um, the control is going to be the same We'll have a low, so low side switch using an end channel FET. So on the ground leg, we'll still have that and then still 24 volts for now controlling it. This is of course now gonna change to fan ground and we're gonna use a different fuse because when these fans, uh, any inductive load, especially a fan, when they start up, they draw a lot more current until they get going. So I found if you just kind of oversize the fuse, that's fairly similar to using a slow blow. It's not the same, but for this case, it should be fine. And we will connect these. And now another big thing that we want to do is, again, since this is an inductive load, we have to protect the rest of the circuit from any pulses as the uh, magnetic field collapses. And the easiest way to do that is just with a diode. And my go-to just generic uh, higher power diode is an S1 GTR. So we reverse bias this. So the cathode goes to the positive leg and the anode goes to the ground leg. And basically when the motor shuts off, any of that induced uh, current 
instead of going back to all your circuitry to complete it, it will just short itself out here and then dissipate all of that power. So for the fan, that really should be all we need. So we can finish off this block and set it right there. So those are our main power outputs done. And I think for this video to keep it uh, somewhat short, I think I'll end it here. Uh, hopefully now the overall idea of the project should be pretty clear. We have the main outputs in the next video, depending on if there's any changes that you guys suggest, we'll take care of those and then work on the logic side. So work on all the sensors and how we're gonna drive uh, these higher power outputs. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments any suggestions or thoughts um, on what should be done from here. And if not, I will see you in the next video.